Hey, heard you want to be a game developer. Well, stick around because we're going to be ripping off Flappy Bird with Godot in just 13 minutes. First off, Node2D. Let's start by renaming it as Player Node and by adding our first child node, Kinematic Body 2D. We're gonna want to rename it as Player. As a child of the Kinematic Body 2D, we're gonna want to add in a Collision Shape 2D as well as a Sprite 2D to make up for the form of our player. Lastly, would be an Area 2D with another collision shape as its child, which will serve as our hitbox. Digging in deeper into each individual node, let's start with our sprites. Your sprite node is going to serve as your physical representation of your player. So, add in an image of your preference. Any image would actually do, but in my case, I'll be using a 16x16 16 16 white square. Drag the image towards the Texture tab in the Inspector window, and congratulations, you have gotten your first sprite node to work. Next up, Collision Shape. Click on the Collision Shape node, and the Inspector window will allow you to choose your preferred shape. In my case, I'll be using a rectangle, which I'll be setting the extents to perfectly match our sprite node earlier. Next up would be the Collision Shape for our Area 2D node. We're going to be following the same process as we did with the previous collision shape. However, this time, we're going to set up the collision shape that it overlaps the sprite node just a little bit. This would help us identify collision and for us to easily call functions later on. It seems that we're about done. Sounds easy? Let's move to something a little bit harder. Coding. Hmm. <laughs> First, we're going to be laying out our variables. Let's start with the constants. Up would be a vector 2 indicating the upwards direction through an x and y axis. We're going to want to add in another constant to indicate the strength of each flap and constants to indicate maximum fall speed and gravity. We're going to be adding in a variable for a blank vector 2 and we'll be using this as our controller to indicate direction. On our physics process function, we'll be setting it up that gravity will be pulling our bird down gradually until it accelerates and gets capped towards the maximum fall speed. Now before we get any further, we would need to set up our input maps. Based highly on preference, so I'll be mapping the flap button to my spacebar. Now we're down to our first if statement. If we were to press space on our keyboard, the player would be propelled upwards on its Y axis. Oh, and uh, make sure you put as negative that it goes upwards. Now for all of this to work, we will need to set our motion variable to an inbuilt function called move and slide. This would help the engine identify linear movement and collision. Mm -hmm. And the next thing that you need to do is save your scene. I don't know man, that sounds like a lot of work. For our walls, we would need to have a new scene set up. We're going to be naming our node 2D as wall node. Instead of using a kinematic body, we'll be using a static body which we're going to name walls with three children, namely sprite, collision shape, and light occluder. We're going to be using the same image for the sprite. However, this time we'll be scaling the image that it sort of looks like a wall. And you'll also need to move your first wall upwards. What's this? Looks like sprite's going for a name change. He wants to be called the upper wall sprite for some reason. Next up, collision shape. Just like the previous collision shape from player node, we'll be setting the collision extents that it fit the sprite perfectly. Once you're done, he'd like to have his name changed too. Next up would be your light occluder. On the inspector window, create a new occluder polygon. 
Click this button right here and trace the edges of your walls until you close it up. Adding light occluders would help us simulate dynamic shadows later on. Light occluders are optional, but I tell you, it's gonna be worth it. Hold shift and select all three child nodes. Right click and select duplicate. Now we have three extra clones to deal with. Instead of having our clones named as upper wall nodes, we'll be renaming them one by one lower wall nodes. To move them downwards, remove the negative sign on the Y axis in position. Doing so would give you equal distance between both upper and lower walls. Now we're going to be doing the same process for all three clones. However, the position may come in differently for the light occluder. Make sure that it fit perfectly with your lower wall shape. And we're just about done. We're going to be adding in yet another area to denote as a child of her static body, along with another collision shape as its child. We'll be setting the extents of its collision shape that it would cover the whole entrance between both upper and lower walls. This would be for the purpose of detecting our bird as it passes through later on. Next up, click on the static body and brace yourselves because we're going to be doing some more coding. First, remove all the crap you don't need. Second, under the physics process function, we're going to be setting the body's position and that it is constantly moving two points per tick to the left. Third, well, there is no third. That's about it. Again, make sure you save your work, and we're going to be moving on to our next scene. Down to our last scene, we're going to want to rename our main node 2D as World. Instead of adding in another node, we're going to want to click this button right here. Doing so allows us to instance the other scenes into this new scene that we have in front of us. In this case, we're going to be adding in our player scene. Right click on your player scene and select make local. Doing so would localize our player node, making it possible for us to gain access to our player's child nodes. Next up, we're going to be adding the wall nodes as well. Click this button right here, this one, that one, and uh, those buttons there too. Doing so would allow us to drag nodes along with their children through grid lines, making it easy for us to move the objects through the scene. Next would be a camera 2D as a child of our world node. Set the zoom extents to 0.5 or any zoom level of your preference, just as long as a portion of your walls will be cut off of the screen as an allowance for movement later on. Save your scene. Right click on the world scene and set it as your main scene. Next. Hit the play button, and congratulations, you are awesome, you have successfully made Flappy Bird. If you did, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell. Hey, <laughs> just kidding, we ain't done yet. Duplicate your wall nodes and move the clone 5 grids to the right. Make sure to randomize the height for an extra challenge. Do this for about, um, 5 times. Next up, add yet another area 2D along with a collision shape as a child of our player node. Rename the node as Resetter, and set the collision extents to something like this. Make sure to have it outside of the camera bounds. I'll be explaining why later. Click on the Resetter, and inside the node window just beside the Inspector tab, click on Body Entered, and connect the signal to your player body. You may notice a new function added to your code, but don't panic yet. We're going to be adding in a variable to spawn additional walls into the game. Right click on your wall scene and select copy path. Paste the path into your preload variable as a string. Next up we're going to be setting up another function for a wall spawner. First add in a variable to have your wall instantiated and set the position of the instantiated walls to a constant 450 on the x axis and a random number between negative 60 and 60 on the y axis. Doing so would help us have that Flappy Bird difficulty with the randomness of the wall height. Next would be a code to have the wall scene spawn once this function would be called, wherein the instantiated walls would become a new child of the parent node. On the function from the area 2D, we'll be setting an if statement to identify the body that would enter the area. If a body with the name walls enters the area, the body would be deleted and we would be calling the function to reset and spawn an additional wall. If you followed everything correctly, the game would then look like this.
To break the illusion, here's how it looks like if we zoom it out. For the detect node, connect a signal to area entered. This would give us yet another function to work on. If our player's area 2D collides with another area named point area, which is basically the area in between the walls, we're going to be giving our score variable an additional one point whenever it happens. And we're going to be doing another signal. If our player's area 2D collides with a body, namely the walls, our scene would be forced to reset. So I wouldn't like to end the video without making the game look cool. So we're going to be adding in two additional nodes under the world node, a canvas layer with a rich text label as its child. Don't forget to enable viewport follow for the text label and move it somewhere right above here or any of your preference though. Write this very long line of code down on your player body as this would allow us to access the properties of the rich text label despite having them in separate parents. After doing so, we would now be able to set it that the rich text label would be showing our current score variable. Before we celebrate success, we're going to be adding in a sprite node under our world node. Again, we're going to be using the same white square that we have been using earlier. However, this time we would be scaling it that it covers the whole screen and we'll be setting the Z index to a negative number. This would force your sprite to go underneath all other nodes, making it look as if it's the background. Change the colors to something of your preference, though I highly recommend setting it to something of a dark color. Reason why is we're going to be adding in a light 2D node as a child of our player. Upon adding the light 2D node, add in an image of a spotlight into the inspector window. Don't forget to enable shadows, and once you're done, you may now hit the subscribe button.